this is what a radius dish is. Right. Um, right that there, that one has what, 40 grit abrasive paper on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to sand both sides of this. So what we have here is a piece of pipe in here. It's recessed. The reason that it's recessed is so that you can take them and stack them and it doesn't stick up. And on the ones that I have, I have a groove down here where the piece of pipe fits in there with magnets. So I can stack them in there, the pieces don't roll out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we do ukuleles, I do ukuleles, whatever. So I have different size holes on here, depending upon whether I'm doing a ukulele or whether I'm doing a guitar. What we have here is 15 inch center for these dowel pins on here. I took the length of this and the width, found out the dead center, and then this is positioned accordingly on here. There should be some half inch plywood spacers on there. The purpose of these is basically to line it up so that when it's in here, you have a little bit of wood above, a little bit of wood on the other side below, and by doing that, when you're radiusing, you aren't radiusing the mold. Otherwise, you're gonna spend a lot of energy when you do this, you have your piece on here, all right? Basically, this thing was an hour um, in the clamps. Then bring it over here. You can do this on a workbench or somewhere. What's the bottom? I'm going to put in here first. Notice I do not have the pins in. So I'm going to open up one of the ends. I'm going to place this in here. Just press it down. Stick one of the shims underneath there. Stick the shim on the other side. And then when you clamp this, your hope is that the center is in the center or the middle part of where the clamp is. So you can go bring it in here. For this end here, right here is right where I want it. Pull it together. That looks good. That looks pretty good in there. I have a little gap on the side here. So the purpose of this is so that I can take it and press it out to get it to the shape that we want. The curves are off center. All right, so bring it in there. This is all the way down. And then what I'm gonna do is just tighten this up. The gap's going away. And by doing this, this is pretty rigid. Now, if you're one of those three letter companies that make all these other clamps, what they use in here is basically a solid piece of MDF. And they have spreaders in the middle that separate it on there. That's LMI. Alright, so I have this pretty much ready to go on here. Uh, if you have chalk, I'd usually use chalk, put some chalk along here, and what we need to do is to clean this up. Uh, we don't have any chalk, so what I'm going to do is just put some pencil. I know from experience that what's going to take me the longest to radius is the mill. Why? Because it's a dome. Right? And so we're going to hit these spots right away, and then we're gradually going to come up on them. Once you put these pins in, you don't want to open or close that. All right, all kind of funky stuff can happen if you're doing that. On the ends of these, these are sanded a little bit on the taper. Where it has the blue marker on there, um, that part goes up. So line up the one hole, get her in there. Line up the other hole, get her in there, and we should be good to go. By doing it this way, we're sanding in two different operations. We're going to sand this, and then later we're going to sand it when we have the kerfing in here. 
By doing any two operations, there's two advantages. One, I'm not huffing and puffing like crazy, doing it all in one. And the second thing is, because the other side is flat, we're gonna get that a lot closer to the final shape so that after we sand it and we put the kerfing in there, the kerfing's gonna remain nice and wide. If you flip it over and just put it on here where it's straight, the kerfing, and then start sanding it, your kerfing's gonna go different thicknesses as it goes around, all right? So basically put the wheel on here, it's a 25 foot radius, and what you do is you just start turning, spinning. I'll usually go like 20 times this way, and then say 20 times the other way. Try and even it out. If you had a perfect situation, you would have just a square here, and you would walk around the other side and do it on the other side to get it even. You can go a little happy happy on here, put too much pressure on one side, and your one side's a little bit thinner than the other. So that's why I like the Barry as I go. All right, uh, you can also see on the brace of paper where it's actually making contact in this over here. The, we also have the cleaner. If you have a situation, you need to clean it to get rid of it. I'm there. All right, my pencil's gone, pencil's gone. Now I have one more situation. Over here, I didn't get this part. So I want to get that now. Where I have my little edge on there. All right, so that was 122 spins. Get a little wider. All right, there we go. That's the marks gone. So I'm going to leave this clamp up, lift the pins up, get rid of the sawdust. Flip it over, line up my spacers, all right, now that we have the radius on there, it's not going to sit as nice as it was sitting before, but we're still all right. And now we have these spacer blocks. The spacer box is going to go underneath here, and what that's going to do is help keep this in position while we're sanding. Otherwise, what happens is you start sanding and it just flexes down. All right, now I have a little gap on here. I have a little gap on there. So I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna loosen the clamp. I'm gonna press that down so that I have a little bit of friction underneath there. So in order to do that, I gotta take these pins out. Take the pin out, just loosen this, push it down, with that down, locker, line her up. Okay, pencil in here, again the part that takes the longest. This one takes longer because this side is flat where the other side had a little bit of curve to begin with. So when I come on here, and start sanding, I'm getting a little bit. This is cleaning up. Not hitting anything there. Touching there a little bit. Again, it's gonna take a while. Pencil mark's gone there. Almost gone there. We're flush there. We're, I don't know. 
third of the way on here, which isn't too bad for where we are right now. All right, so I don't know, I'm three quarters of the way. Got about five eighths of an inch there to go. You can see all the sawdust coming around there. Just about there. All right. All right, so that's it. Um, when you're done, then be careful. Um, don't undo the clamp with it in here. You can loosen up the spreader, that's no problem. We have four spreaders. Get the pins out of there. And then you have your piece. Have your piece. And this is nice and a fast way to do this. If you don't have the mold and you don't have this set up, it's not a deal breaker. You can still sand it and you can still get it done, but you may have to sweat some more. So we blew them up and put the kerfing in and everything and had the sandpaper face up like this, like he was talking about. And you do have to be careful that the neck block doesn't twist. You want to hold on to it, make sure that you get that secure. But driving the bus looks like this instead of spinning the sandpaper. <laughs> So if you don't have all this stuff, don't let that be an obstacle to implement. You go ahead and glue it. We're going to talk about gluing the kerfing on here in a bit. But once that's all done, then you can sand the whole unit. And that's this one that I've got here is exactly how that was done. I didn't have any of this stuff, just the sandpaper on here. And you can see what he's talking about. The kerfing, I had a student glue the kerfing in for me, and they were a little high right here. And then in the process of driving the bus, it makes the kerfing narrow where there's less glue surface for the back to be able to be glued to. I can still get the back glued on that, but it's not as nice as this. But this is getting us through faster in a week when you're working with your kids and you've got a whole school year and you don't have this stuff or it takes you a while to make some of these things or whatever. You can get by with just having this and just twist this on here before you glue the top and the back. Now, one comment they said about this twisting. One thing you can do if you don't have this situation is you can put a block of wood in here and clamp that block of wood and that helps it with a little bit of rigidity so that this piece isn't moving as much. You're going to need some type of a radius fish. Um, I see and see a bunch of them, bought some of them. Uh, this part making this board doesn't cost much at all so it's a matter of your spending your money on that, do you want to also spend it on this or not? On that radius dish, if you do it right, it can double duty as also a go bar dip. Yeah. Um, in there. That you put in there. recess in that flange inside of it, so that way you cut down on the. You're you, gonna, you, per, you have to pretty much have the radius dish. There's no way to not. Because it's glowing up there and glowing this up. And if you know CNC or how to draw something up in the cab and take it to somebody that has a CNC. Put it this uh, way, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Absolutely.